From being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis to finding out you can no longer play due to blood clots, here are eight goalies who had to hang up the pads early due to injuries or illnesses. Starting off at number one, we have Thomas Falcoon. When people hear the name, they think back to the Billard incident. While facing a partial breakaway, Falcoon stopped the puck but lost sight of the rebound and it went in. The Lord was so mad that the Thrasher scored, he went to smash his stick against the post. But instead, he caught Vokun on the side of the head. Alright, time to get back on track. Vokun was already very fortunate to play 15 seasons in the NHL, but he didn't get to end his career the way he wanted. He was diagnosed with pelvic thrombophlebitis in 2006, and in 2013, he underwent treatment for the blood clots. Although he tried making a comeback in the minor leagues, no team wanted to pick him up due to worries about his health. Gotta give credit where it's due though, because he really wanted to finish out the last couple of seasons, but even though he was forced to retire at 38, his 300 wins are something to be proud of. The next goalie stole the hearts of Canucks fans. Eddie Lack made a name for himself in the few seasons he spent with the Canucks, and in just three years time, he was already playing with the big boys in the NHL. He was the backup goalie for the Hall of Famer Roberto Luongo, which just sounds like a fever dream. Those who were lucky enough to witness the one season that they had together, got to see a bromance being formed between the two. He got traded to the Hurricanes in 2015, and then again to the Devils in 2017, where he saw limited playing time but the 2018 season would see him playing six games in the AHL where he posted an 863 save percentage while allowing a 4.1 goals against average before deciding in December that he needed to have hip surgery. Okay, I know you might not like his stats so far, but any baseball player probably would have already quit before they started. But for Eddie, he did try to make it back into the NHL, yet unfortunately, as you know by the title of this video, he never did make it back and announced his retirement at the age of 31. I'm sure people are waiting to hear about the goaltender who essentially stole money from the Islanders with his contract that they are still paying until 2029. Rick DiPietro Arguably one of the biggest busts in NHL history had a very up and down career. And of course, I'm just going to be honest, there are a lot more downs than ups, but you get the point. He had so much hype going into the 2000 draft that there was a slim chance he could ever even live up to those expectations. I kid you not, he was drafted first overall to the New York Islanders as a goaltender. Just for comparison, Carey Price was drafted fifth overall. Carey Price! And even that was considered high for a superstar goaltender. Anyways, Di Pietro, who was picked first overall, didn't even make it through the first practice before pulling a growing muscle and missing four preseason games. In 2006, former GM Garth Snow, who played goaltender for four seasons with the Islanders, gave Di Pietro a massive 15 year, $67.5 million contract before he believed Di Pietro would even be worth every penny. It would be the 2007 season that the Islanders would start to see their franchise goalie start to crumble. He started suffering all sorts of injuries, including a concussion, numerous knee complications, growing injuries, a hernia, and a facial injury from a fight with Brent Johnson. He only played three games in the 2012 season before the Islanders waived him and he was sent to the AHL. That's right. The goaltender, who probably had the most hype in history, cleared waivers just 12 years into his career. The Islanders had to buy out the rest of his contract in 2013, and he would go on to sign a professional tryout contract with the Charlotte Checkers. The Checkers would eventually cut him, and Di Pietro announced his retirement as well at the age of 31. If you watched the goalie meltdown video, link in the description, then you won't be surprised that Josh Harding would also make it onto this list. When the Wild drafted Harding in the second round, they had high hopes that he would be able to become the number one goaltender. He would spend a couple of seasons going back and forth between the Wild and the AHL team, the Houston Arrows, while posting good numbers. It was the 2007 season that he would start earning a spot on the Wild as a backup goalie. A few seasons later in 2010, Harding tore his MCL and ACL in his right knee during a preseason game. 
I just tore them to playing football and trust me, it is not good. And Harding was forced to miss the entire season as he recovered. And unfortunately for him, more bad news would come in 2012 when he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. He was doing well the next season, but had to be sidelined due to a modification of his MS treatment protocol. Then came the 2014 fiasco when he got into a heated argument with a teammate and kicked the wall out of frustration, fracturing his foot. He was suspended from the team until he was healthy to play, and unfortunately, he never returned to the wild and retired at the age of 30. Sometimes it's not about skill, it's about bad decisions. And I kind of think that getting into an argument with a teammate that makes you break your own foot is a problem. Cause he ain't a soccer player. He's not kicking a ball, he's kicking a wall. Anyways, I think it's time we talked about a goaltender who left the game after taking a stick to the eye. Bernie Perrant played during the era where goaltenders did not have any protection for their face. He started his career with the Boston Bruins, but they left him unprotected when the 1967 expansion occurred, bringing the total number of teams from 6 to 12. The Flyers would claim him and he would play for four seasons with them before being traded to the Maple Leafs. Perrant would become very lucky with his team in Toronto because his goalie partner would be Jacques Plante. Plante would of course mentor Perrant, allowing for him to sharpen his skills. Perrant would be traded back to the Flyers in 1973 after a brief stint in the WHA. He would put up insane numbers and win two Stanley Cups. However, the good times came to an end on February 17, 1979 when an errant stick entered the right eye hole of his mask, causing permanent damage to his vision. He regained his sight two weeks later, but not at the level required to keep playing, so unfortunately, he announced his retirement at the age of 34. And for the first time on our list, this was an absolute superstar stud goaltender who probably missed out on a couple of trophies down the road. Imagine being drafted in the first round like Di Pietro, but instead, you have to retire at the age of 30, a year earlier. Pascal Leclerc was selected as the 8th overall pick in the 2001 draft. Just like Di Pietro, the expectations for him were pretty high. It would take him 3 seasons playing in the AHL, but in all honesty, I bet the Blue Jackets fans wished he just stayed down there. Not even because of his skill, he just wasn't a fit in the NHL. He just couldn't stay healthy. In the 2006 season, this was the start of the downfall for Leclerc. He missed over 40 games that season with a knee injury. Then in the 2008 season, he missed another 40 games with an ankle injury. He missed 20 games with a concussion and a broken jaw in the 2009 season, and another 40 games with a hip injury during the 2010 season. Then he sat out the entire 2011 season so he could get three surgeries done to fix the hip injury and give himself time to recover. He was also an unrestricted free agent and went the entire year without signing to an NHL team, so he called it quits and announced his retirement at the age of 30, playing 173 games in his career. When talking about a goaltender's prime, we typically refer to this as the goalie's highest peak in performance, which is usually around the age of 31 to 34. But only one of the goaltenders mentioned above was even able to make it to that. If you ever watched the video where the goalie collapsed on the ice and had to be stretched then you're probably gonna know who's the next goaltender on our list. Let me just start off by saying that the all red setup Michael Neuvert had when he was with the Capitals was just so beautiful. In one season, he played in the ECHL, AHL, and NHL, combining to play a total of 35 games. He earned the role as a starting goaltender for the 2011 season, and despite a solid season, he was demoted to the backup role. It was the 2012 season where he suffered an injury to his left knee when a player fell on it. The injuries kept coming after that, and eventually, he was traded to the Sabres. The Sabres would go on to trade him to the Flyers in 2015. He would never regain the title as the starting goaltender, and he couldn't manage to stay healthy long enough to battle for the spot. On April Fool's Day 2017, he went through the scariest incident that I have ever seen in hockey. And no, this was unfortunately not a prank. He is quoted saying, I remember getting dizzy, and my vision was a little off. I was seeing double, and the first thing I really remember was sitting in the locker room. Neuvier was battling an illness and tried to tough it out, but during a stoppage of play, he collapsed onto the ice and had to be stretchered off. He suffered a slight concussion and a neck injury from the fall. He played one more injury-filled season with the Flyers and became a free agent. He attended the Maple Leafs training camp on a professional tryout contract 
but was released before the start of the season. Due to lingering injury problems, he announced his retirement at the age of 31. The last goalie on our list is Steve Mason. Just like Leclerc, Mason was thrust into the starting role at the age of 20, and after posting great numbers, he earned the Calder Trophy. He struggled the next three years though, and was traded to the Flyers. This is where his injury troubles started. During a TV timeout in the second period, Mason was stretching and pulled something. He headed to the locker room immediately and was replaced by Ray Emery. When he was traded to the Winnipeg Jets in 2017, it would be the last season he would ever play in the NHL. He suffered two concussions in two months and a knee injury two months later. When his contract was over, he became a free agent but no team wanted to pick him up. He was 30 when he announced his retirement. And there you have it. 8 goaltenders who were forced to retire early. Did we miss any goalies that should have been added to this list? Let us know in the comment section below. And click here to watch the most childish moments in the NHL. If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow. And see you next time.